in this motherfucker. So y'all get ready, lace your boots up, put your seatbelts on, don't be a crash dummy. Tanya, what's going on with you? Everything is well, everything is well. You know, we had the eclipse, the world didn't come to an end, so I am happy, but I'm so eager to dig into what happened at Zizuka. So I am ready. All right, Money, what's up with you, bro? Man, nothing, just making it do what it do. You know what I'm saying? Had an eclipse today. Felt a little good today, because uh, some kind of bright side, especially with this year. Listen, I might have checked out for this year, but the eclipse kind of put a little smile on my face. So, oh, yeah. shout out to Ferrari. Oh, 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 okay. Talking about Ferrari, we're about to get into uh -huh. So, what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to spend about 10, 15 minutes on each topic, chiming in. We'll see y'all in the live chat. Feel free to go ahead and throw it up in there. It's no guarantee we're going to respond to that, but we will see. And if we can, we'll time a lot, we go in. So let's go ahead. We're going to pop tall first on Carlos at Ferrari right now. Really, to me, showing up boss mode status. I know Charles is leading right now the Drivers' Championship, but we got to keep in mind Carlos was out one race, had a surgery, came back, and still bossed it up. Uh -huh. So, Tony, you know, ladies first here, we're going to have some manners. How do you feel about this whole situation at Ferrari? Well, the reason why I'm sporting the red lipstick, and a lot of people don't even realize that. Is that the, the reason Ruby why? Ruby, 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 no, so, this, okay. no, this this is the MVP. This is the, the Fenty MVP. We've upgraded, okay? The, the right. Ruby Woo makes, make, makes our lips dry. Nobody <laughs> wants to tell you that, but it's the truth, okay? So, <laughs> but getting back, getting on to Carlos, um, I so love that he's given it everything despite this being his last year with Ferrari. Um, and I like that he's also given the fight to, um, to, to, to Charles because I think he's one of the more underestimated drivers in Formula One. I don't understand why, but his performance, another time on a podium, he is, it's tried and true. He is the future of Formula One. I used to say he was the future of Ferrari, but in light of Lewis Hamilton going to Ferrari, I think he's still the future of Formula One. Okay. I'm like, how you feel, bro? Listen, I basically just feel the same on that. I just, I really believe, and I would stand 10 toes down on this and say Carlos is probably the most disrespected person that's mm. really going at Formula One right now. I mean, you see that he's just, listen, that, and I understand that you bring in the GOAT and everything for next year, and but that decision right now, is looking not all the way together but we already knew what carlos brings not just to ferrari but just to it just to the sport in general and we already knew what he's capable of doing but like i said if you're going to replace anybody with him you just got to bring the goat period okay that's fair so let, let's let's talk about carlos in the future because i feel like there's a little dynamic playing here that already had played out in mercedes so when we talk about the future of Ferrari, I think some of the concepts out there that exist about Valtteri and Lewis, and then we had Russell. Oh. If Russell's coming in, Lewis or Valtteri, one of them got to go. And when you look at it, Valtteri's got to go because he surely can't lead us anywhere any further than Lewis can, and his upside is not as high as Russell may be or may could be. And I think that's the same thing that's kind of going on with Leclerc is – He's got time. He's got potential. He's got one lap pace. He makes bonehead decisions. But I do think if we're talking about upside as far as potential and a ceiling that might not be quite laid with the sheetrock and painted just yet, I think Charles may have that. But Carlos is showing that right now he's a better driver. He makes better decisions. And in these in this situation right now, He's he's proven good, but will that be the case four years from now? Is is Carlos somebody they can build off of Ferrari four years from now, or is Carlos gonna kind of be like an Alonso? Next thing you know, he's gonna start bag chasing, especially if he don't get a chip. Is he as dedicated to Ferrari as he should be with Audi coming in and with his dad's ties to Audi? So there's a lot of things at play there. So how do y'all feel about that coming? I know we got the go coming in, and if the go comes in, somebody got to go. And I also said I don't know if Ferrari might be second guessing who they putting out the door. But when you go back and look at the relationships, Fred Vassour, Charles, everything else, you kind of understand it, but it still does look a little bit funny. So, Tanya, with that, it, with that being said, in the inboundment of Lewis Hamilton, do you feel like Ferrari is making a profitable decision or a in-the-moment decision? Well, I think that in the very beginning, they had their money. They had their, their hands on Charles Leclerc. 
he was Ferrari. So I think that they're just sticking to that. But what they weren't expecting weren't, I don't think that they were, like I said, they were underestimating Carlos in everything that he's been able to bring um, in the aspect of being able to get in there and work with the engineers to formulate a car that works for him, the strategy decisions that he makes when he is racing, when they're saying, come in, he's like, no, I'm going to stay out or <clears throat> choosing to do the pit stops, the tires that he wants. Um, but understandably, that's just the way that Formula One goes sometimes, right? Sometimes it's not necessarily the best driver that has to leave, but maybe the more popular driver they want to keep. However, with that being said, because it happens, but with that being said, I think that Carlos is taking this time to also hone his skills as well, as he should, because he's still a fairly younger driver that is going to be in Formula One. Now, as far as bouncing around all over the place, I hope not. I hope wherever he lands next, if it is a good team, if it is a fair team, if it is a team that is able to give him a car that, that he can compete with, maybe he should stick there. The only trepidation that I have with Audi is that it's going that when Audi does come in, there are going to be some hiccups. There are going they are gonna to have to figure out what works best for them. And my thing is if Carlos does go to Audi, will he be able to Will he be willing, not able to, I know he's able to, but will he be willing to weather that storm in whatever comes their way, whether it's good or bad? Right. Imani, what's up, bro? So I believe that 100%. Uh, here's the thing with Ferrari is that we already know Charles is the golden boy. He's mm -hmm. the marketing guy. He's the younger guy. And we, we are established that right now. You bring in the GOAT to basically to go, we understand we have the GOAT with us. But Charles, on the other hand, has to understand that while he's there. This is a learning situation. This ain't Mercedes bringing George in and George is trying to beat Lewis. That's just what, it, that's what it's not. When Lewis touched down in red, we don't need no Ferrari going to do what Ferrari does. It's either you take care of the GOAT or you don't. Now, now with Carlos' situation is that when if he goes to Audi and when – no, yeah, when, well, if, no, when he goes to Audi, he's got to be that main guy. Audi has to see that and go, we need an experienced racer that's going to just tear it up, period. But also bring in the younger guy also. So that's the whole thing with Carlos that I'm happy that, like I said, he, the ball, the balling out this year, he's basically showing that he can do it. He can be the main guy on the team. And Ferrari just looking like, we understand what Carlos can do, but, you know, we, we still bring in the GOAT also. So I agree right. with that 100%, though. Right. And Mary Beanie in the Super Chat says it should be Sainz and Lewis at Ferrari next year. So, okay, let's play this out hypothetically since Mary Beanie brought it up. Let's, let's play no, this out. No, but Mary is right. I'm, right, I'm sorry, Right, that's what I'm going to say. So I'm going right. to give it, no, I'm gonna give it to you uh -huh. first, Tanya. Hypothetically speaking, if uh -huh. you're keeping Sainz and you're keeping Lewis, where is Charles going? Where, where, what out there exists? Because right now the question is, what out there exists for Carlos? Does the same amount of options exist for Carlos, exist for Charles if they decided to do this? We speak in hypothetical. So, Tanya, what do you that, think? That's a very good question to ask. And I, I would say yes. I don't think that by any means Charles Leclerc is a throwaway driver. I mean, we're not talking about Logan Sargent here. Forget. I did it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Shout out to America. <laughs> Shot, shots fired. Um, but I, I really think I really do think that Charles Leclerc. I mean, he is. You know, he he races well. He deserves a seat still in Formula One. But I just, I'm just having a hard time with them just giving Carlos the shaft. And mm. I feel like, <clears throat> I feel like his consistency, um, the way that he pushes. And and how he it's like he just had surgery and then he came out the gate swinging. I love that tenacity. I so love that. So but the thing is with Lewis Hamilton and you know what? Let's think of it from Charles's perspective. When Charles leaves Ferrari, right, Lewis Hamilton comes in. All the lights are going to be on Lewis Hamilton. Do you really want to be? right next to him, kind of out of the spotlight, but kind of still in it. No, you want to move on and maybe try to do have your own team and build your own team because Charles Leclerc is going to have to live at the end of the day. He's going to have to live in Lewis Hamilton's shadow. So 
so if I was if I was Carlos, I'd be like, you know what? Let me go out here and try to do something else because you're living in the goat shadow anyway. <laughs> uh, well, well, hold on, hold on, because I think right now we got a double standard going on. Okay, because what? a lot of us have said. I don't know if you said it. I know I said. What? It. A lot of us said that Russell need to take a back seat and learn from the GOAT. Charles himself yes. said it would be a wonderful opportunity to have Lewis because then I could learn from him, which is something Carlos has had from his dad and being raised in a completely racing environment. So now will we criticize Charles for stepping back and learning and kind of like a QB, kind of like Justin Fields. Had Justin Fields had a, a senior quarterback in front of him like Tom Brady, or somebody right. like that to kind of groom him up like Patrick Mahomes had. Maybe he would have been a better quarterback being set up. So now are we going to criticize Charles if Charles is willing to say to himself like, yo, I know it's some things I'm not ready for. I know it's a lot of shit I'm going to learn from him. Let me chill and pick up some of this shit so I can then be ready to carry Ferrari into the future. So are we doing that? So what, I, so what I'm saying is, is that there is each one of those drivers on that grid have an inner bastard. They do. <laughs> they want to win, Jeez. all right? They do. They want to win. Woo. And yeah. for for him to say, I'm just going to sit back. Right. Yeah, we kind of got those vibes from George Russell, but now you see what's going on, right? Uh -huh. So I think yeah. I think that, that <laughs> there may be some intention. Yeah, I'm going to learn from the GOAT. But if there is a gap, you don't think that Charles Leclerc is going to take it? Oh, yeah. he's going to take it. <laughs> And, you know, so so what I'm saying is, Lewis, go into Ferrari, handle your business, take no prisoners, including the competition that's sitting next to you. Because at the end of the day, this isn't this isn't like football, you guys like right. they are competing. These two drivers, that is that's your competitor. Your teammate is your competitor. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think that it's so much of a double standard, but I'm hoping as a Lewis Hamilton fan, because I'm always 10 toes down for Lewis. Right. That Lewis would take that seat, do what he has to do. And if he has to leave Charles Leclerc in the dust, Boom. then he has to leave him in the dust. So and that's big. it. Yamani, go ahead. Last word on this topic, man. Let me know how you feeling about that whole so, hypothetical situation. I, see, so I think that's what the problem with Ferrari is right now. It's too mm -hmm. much competition going on. It's, it's too many Chiefs, not enough Indians on there. Okay? <laughs> and, then his, and then the reason <laughs> is you, we still have to understand that F1 is still a business at the end of the day. It's still a, in, basically an entertainment platform. You put the guy in there. And now that's it. We love Carlos death. But you put in Charles Leclerc, he's just more marketable than, than Carlos. That's basically at the end of the day. And you just basically have to tell us Charles to go, hey, listen, he, listen here. Don't, tr we're not, we're not doing, we're not, we're not trying to compete. Okay. You just stay in your lane. If you, if you behind him, you do your defense and, you know, at the end of the day, ain't no pushing, ain't no, you know, trying to figure out uh, who's going to lead what, this and this. If Lewis is in front, Lewis got the pace, you stay behind, you play on defense, this and this, okay? But at the end of the day, we still got to understand that F1 is still a business at the end of the day. And you just get the most, the whole the whole thing is that Leclerc is in there for marketing capabilities. That's it. He's going to be in commercials and everything right there with Lewis and all that. We're, and they don't need Carlos because... If Carlos shows up, Lewis, allegedly, I'm just saying, then it's going to probably be a problem, which is going on in Ferrari right now. Too many Chiefs, not enough Indians. That's all, that's all I'm saying. So we saying Charles is only good for them Felipe Paddock commercials. Those, uh, yeah, those, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Those I billboards mean, that you see. look good in an Armani suit. That's all I'm saying. When, you, when you're at the airport and you and you look at wherever you're looking at, that's, that's Charles Leclerc right there in the whole – mink outfit and everything right you don't see carlos doing that true you see you you see leclerc doing that i was i was at the airport today i saw, I saw my boy right there i said oh look at that look at that you see the reason <laughs> i'm just saying oh my god uh -huh. mother said look at there look at that yeah. hey you know it's something to be nice to be dressed and impressed but he does uh and he got songs out big shout out to Shaw. you know you're doing your thing you know you music industry doing all that stuff you know that's cool bro but you do i think he does need to focus more he, he made like mary beanie just said leclerc makes more mistakes than sains felipe at aston martin and he does he makes a lot of bonehead 
uh, decisions. Uh -huh. He pushes the car beyond what the car is ready to do, even though he knows it's not going to be able to do it. And I understand there's a point like I'm going to push, push. But, bro, when you pushing and you reckon in free practice, reckon in quality yeah. and you reckon it, uh, yo, at some point in time, you got to realize like the shit's just not there. So while we yeah. getting on Carlos, big shout out to Carlos, because I always say Carlos the plug, he bossing up. I was hoping that when he yeah. came into the season with the situation, he was going to leave them with a, uh, yeah, I'm going to say it, leave you with a fuck you on his way out the door and make a very <laughs> good you. resume for himself. Thank you. You know what I'm uh -huh. saying? I, I'm just going to tell it like it is. I was hoping he'd uh -huh. do that. We're about to get into the next situation here, and that is going to be yuki we're gonna talk about yes. yuki right now yuki suki is what i call him don't count his ass out listen i'm gonna say this because i'm finna tee up my brother and my sister right now yuki has been disrespected time and time again i remember yes. when i was campaigning for yuki and looking through the pay scales and i said is that motherfucking latifi with a million dollar ban on his contract and i said what in the fuck is going on yuki is 750 they got to give my bro some more respect then when devries comes in with the luck off his ass and monster because alex albon out with penicitis he does his thing with four williams comes in and motherfucker gets shit can and then have to pay a quarter million dollars for a motherfucking future in formula one he didn't even have then while no. we got Danny Rick decide, mm -hmm. I ain't going to go out here and live my life on a special no more. I want to drive. Danny Rick come back again. They discounting right. Yuki saying, Danny Rick, if you come in and do your shit, you got a shot at RB. Yuki has been bringing home the motherfucking grocery for Alpha Tori, Red Bull, Visa, uh -huh. Cash App, whatever the hell you want to call them, to eat. And no other driver has, except I'm going to give Lim Lawson the credit. Lim, you came in. Danny Rick, I ain't glad you broke your shit, but when you broke it, the sun shined right. on another dog's ass and Liam Lawson came in and showed you up. We have four drivers cycle up out of there. Yuki been disrespected. That's how I feel. And I feel like Yuki should. I, this is what I know. I understand this. They say junior drivers come up, never do well, but that's the way Red Bull functions. All I'm saying is if you gave Danny Rick a, a set list of goals, if he reached them, that he would get a shot in a Red Bull car. He's not reaching them and Yuki is killing him. Why is Yuki uh -huh. not getting that same look? What you say, Tanya, on that, my sister? So let's run it back to <laughs> Mr. Liam, okay? Because yeah. he had, he was coming for Yuki's neck. Like, he felt like if I could show when Danny Ricardo was out because he broke his wrist, he felt like if he could show Yuki out that he was going to somehow get Yuki's seat. I don't know why on God's green earth he thought that. And the same thing with Nick DeFreeze. Like, they really have it out for him. Uh -huh. And right, I'm yep. just like, this. It, it's just uh -huh. ridiculous. I will say this. Huge shout out, shout out to Yuki Sonoda. He scored at home in Suzuka in front of yep. his friends and his family. family. And I am so happy that he was able to, to bring home the points right. at Suzuka. Um, but moving forward, they, they treat Yuki like a redhead stepchild. They really do. Up. It's like he 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 moved up. He went into Formula One. He was already underestimated ever since he got there, um, and he has proven himself. Even with the help of Pierre Gasly, Pierre Gasly imparted some some mad knowledge onto him, and I know that that Pierre Gasly gave him the skinny on how Red Bull really works. Right. Because Pierre Gasly, he was jerked around uh -huh. too. And I think that, but do you really think that Yuki Tsunoda really wants to move up into that Red Bull seat with Max Verstappen? I mean, I just, I think that's just a hard seat for anybody. I mean, it's like, I feel like that's where inspirational Oof. drivers go to die in that second seat Oof. for whatever reason. Perez I mean, you abused. see it. He liked being abused. Well, Perez, the ultimate. Well, I think, man. but, wow. But he look at Alexander Arvon. But is he the ultimate yes man or is he just trying to do his job just to survive though? Because he is this year. I mean he Daniel both. Ricardo, he but see, look what happens when you go up against Max Verstappen. Daniel Ricardo tried to do it. Look what happened. He got canned. Well, he left. No, he about right? to say he, he quit. No, yeah. he left. Yeah, he, he didn't quit. get canned. He left. He left. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, because they because they doubled down on Max, so he kind of felt slighted at that point. Which, yeah, but I your mean, nickname is the agree, Honey Badger, though. You the Honey oh Badger. Oh my God! And you let him boot it your doesn't. Uh, it I'm doesn't just... matter if what his name is. Dan Ricardo in that time and space, he was an exceptional Ooh. driver. Now, now, t right now, today, that's all in question because it seems like you can know to give him the business now, right? <laughs> but still, that second seat in Red Bull is 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 it's the vicious. Abyss. It's, it's, it's vicious. 
Uh-huh. Like, there's only certain people that can handle it. And at this Alonzo. moment in time, Checo is okay with that. You What? Alonzo. Alonzo won't be able to handle that. See, Alonzo yeah. and Max, they will be no. fighting every exactly. day. They will be Exactly. I want to see all the smoke. That's not. I, that's what I want to see, too. But at the that same time, you, is that the smoke that Helmut Marco and Christian Horner want to see? H2 no, because they no, don't want Max to don't. have no good competition. Max exactly. ain't had not no. one solid. He ain't had one solid partner in his life. Max right. ain't had one solid you partner in his that, life. Wait, hold on. You don't think that that Daniel Ricardo about five six? You don't think Daniel Ricardo was a good was a good match for him? I can't that say. What, I can't. I can't, I can't talk on what's not because Daniel quit. Had he stayed in the seat and really did his thing, then we would have saw. Because when he was there, when he was there, he was doing his thing. He should have stayed in the seat and kept the business up. But he left. He walked out. So then he left that all open to interpretation. And since Daniel yeah. Ricardo, they have not paired a driver that has been competitive nope. or had the heart of a lion next to Max. Max ain't had to live through that right. shit. He ain't had to live through it like, like damn Lewis. Lewis done had to be paired up with <laughs> right. champions. Lewis, done had, Lewis came in with all the smoke. Yes. Max yeah. ain't never faced that. My, Max been like this. Oh, little, it's okay. I mean, I'm saying he good, but I'm just uh-huh. saying he fragile. He fragile. You know, you can't you can't drop him. You can't so, even do that. All right. That's, That's all I'm saying. He's still a good driver. So, he do his I thing, know. but he fragile. So I know that we're talking about Yuki Sonoda, right? And yeah. we have shifted to Max Verstappen, even though you know this is wasn't supposed to be a Max Verstappen no. podcast. But right. what and I'm saying not. is. As much as Daniel Ricardo is struggling, right? The the car that he didn't struggle in was the Red Bull car. I so my thing is, if they put, because I think that that's 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 the mind the mind f that Daniel Ricardo has been getting. He did so well in that Red Bull car, and he's gone to race for like about three other teams now, and he cannot find his niche in any of these teams nope. or any of these cars, for that matter. Yeah. But what would happen if you put him next to Max Verstappen now? Uh-huh. You I, think I he would choke? Same. I think he hell he choking right now like a No, right but now. I, I mean I'm right but with I'm just thinking, would that be the resurgence of Daniel Ricardo? No, it won't. Next no, Max no, Verstappen no, again. I so. what? I you what, hey, Monty, hey, Monty, let, let's give him money at some time. Hey, Monty, tell us all what right, you think about right, this, brother. Right. Tell us what you hey, think. Let's, We're gonna let's, come back to this. Let's talk about Yuki right now. Oh, hold on, okay. hold on, money. First, we got uh, Sylvia Wick says, <laughs> okay. Honey Badger turned into a sloth. <laughs> Jeez! <laughs> then then uh, Mary Beanie says, Tanya, the problem with Mercedes, Princess Shady, and Toto. Go ahead, Amani, you got it. <laughs> so the, so the, thing with, the thing with Yuki right now is there's only one word to describe what he's going through right now, and it's growth, mm. okay? And the reason why the whole di- disrespect and everything that happened because... It was always the attitude of him. It was always the whole back talk and all this other stuff. Now we all we, we know that you know Red Bull has another baby on the team that likes to back talk and all this other stuff. Whatever, okay. But the, but with Yuki, he was always in there for like I always thought for like one year it was like let me just put him in here for a filler and all this other stuff. But then as the time goes by, you see the growth. We see in we see in the Japanese race that this weekend when they had that whole five car pit lane this and this and they got out oh thank you what was it well i looked at the right. screen was like True. wait a minute what is, is this yuki? is this yuki talking no way <laughs> right, right you know what i'm saying is this yuki talking so i believe that like i said yuki right now i don't think he ever will get that red bull seat mm-hmm. i for, for for some reason he just need to go and find another find another route because he's still getting disrespected over there and and like i said with Daniel, you you put Daniel in a seat right next to him, and you still promising Daniel the main top seat when all this stuff happens all next year. This and this, that's just that straight disrespect for Yuki. Sure. You might as well just go somewhere else. Because like I said, right now he's showing y'all what he can do, and this is I'm not gonna. And, and the only thing is that he's just getting better every single year. He's getting better. So why isn't he the main one talking about he needs to do the top seat because? They just don't believe in them. It's just a whole Red Bull thing over there. They don't want them. Damn. They, Damn. I mean, that's just what it is. Right. You know? So he's a girl right now? Go. Talk. Yes, because now he's actually the competition. For, for If you put him on the if you put him on the same, right there on the same team, you got him and Max on the team, that's the competition that they don't want Max to have. That right there, they don't want, they don't want that, period. 
They don't. They don't want that because you know what I'm saying. Max is there. Like I said, he's you know you just gotta. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's true. That, now that's, I, will, that's I will so say sad. this. I will say this, Tony. I want you because I do. I hear what you're saying about Danny Rick, but I just don't think Dan, Danny Rick is the Danny Rick that you saw from last time he was out of Rick. I think. I know they did the test and they said Danny Rick's times, if he was there, he would have been second row next to Max Verstappen. But that they was, said that. that. Okay, before they said that, Danny Rick also was out there spinning out and doing damn uh, spin cam on the damn track, too. Yep. And then yep. when he, <laughs> when that, that was out there with nobody in the room. We do a lot of shit where ain't nobody in the room. I ain't going <laughs> to ask y'all all what y'all do when ain't nobody in the room. But we do a lot of shit when ain't nobody in the room. And when people get in there, you know, you straighten up. Danny mm -hmm. Rick. What just ask just answer this? What has Danny Rick showed you in the Red Bull Junior Varsity team that gives you promise or gives you hope that if he stepped into the RB twenty in race pace, that you actually think he'd be able to mentally, physically command himself to be the honey badger that you remember? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> but but <laughs> but but there's a but. All right. Okay. okay, okay. But. It may be because he has had, okay, he may be a princess, all right? And I'm not saying this to like down any women, you know, but right, he may no, be a princess. No. Right. You know the guy, oh, I gotta have this particular setup. Oh, I gotta have this particular car. Okay. I have to okay. have this particular this, particular that. Kind of like Max Verstappen. If Max Verstappen was put in any other car on the grid, yeah, he, he would not it. race as place. well as he does now, right? His last place, put yes. Max Verstappen in a Williams. Put him in a last place, right? <laughs> He's not exactly. finishing the race. So this is so this is what I'm saying. How about this, Wolfpack, Mister Wolfpack performance? Right. How about they take Yuki and put him in um, Max Verstappen's car? Then they put Daniel Ricardo in Max Verstappen's car, and whoever mm. goes faster, then Checo gets booted to whatever you know back to um, <clears throat> be Yuki. the junior team, right? The junior team for a year, and just let them battle it out. But it's not okay. going to be either one of them. You know why? Because they will never want Max Verstappen to be challenged like that. Because once Max Verstappen yep. is challenged like that, he fucks shit up. Fuck he does. True. It's true. Well, Daniel, so Daniel won't be the one challenging. I'll tell you that. Oh, my gosh. So we he'll don't have know the seat. That. He'll have the seat. You're not putting Yuki we there. Don't know You're definitely that. putting Daniel right. there. So it they ain't have to race. Be it, you know, you know, it's like Daniel Ricardo. Like, you know, he was married, and then he went to the he went to the side chick, and then he went to the other side chick, and he thought the grass was greener, and it really wasn't. And then I really feel like if he ends up with the wife again, it might work. It might you work. Know what? That was a that was a pretty fucking good walkthrough right there, Tonya. Shit, that was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, but the wife is married wow. though. Right, the wife is married with a couple of kids though. So hey, you can come hey, to what? the window and hit rocks on the window all day long. Throw hey, your hair that? down. What was that movie? Bloodshot. Hair, so she ain't throwing her hair down there. Yeah, that was. <laughs> hey, that's like the movie Bloodshot. Bro, show up like I'm back. She's like, "What you mean you back? You've been gone for five years. I got yeah. kids and shit now. What you mean you back? Where you coming? Get out of here. Look, Daniel, talking to my Daniel sister. Rick, I tried. I tried to convince them. They're they're hey, not here. Big, hey, big shout out to OG Zilla with the super chat sub fam. I got the purple sectors hat. Thanks, bro. Hey, no problem, bro. You welcome, man. Hey, so I, you can. <sighs> I do hope that Yuki is putting together a body of work that is going to allow him to get some type of seat where somebody's going to look at him. We can bring him in potentially no more. Now, let's just be clear. It's only a select few teams that are going to do that. And if he leaves the Red Bull, and I think there is a there's a there's a there's a Dallas Cowboys situation existing. If you are in a Red Bull Jeez. junior team, and you're trying to perform right. Dak is just good enough to get us into the playoffs, but not good enough to command the team to get us through the playoffs. But the quarterback market is shit. We don't want to be in quarterback no man's land. If we get rid of him, we're worse off. So now what do we got to do? We got to pay him. Yuki's in a situation where we're like, it's, where do I go? Alpine, they ain't shit. They used to be best of the rest, and they ain't even the rest. Where do I go? Haas, they Haas. They the Ferrari Haas team. Where do uh -huh. I go? Williams, 
is how they on the up, but not really. And shit, they got a person over there fucking up shit, and they won't even get Jamie Chad with wherever she need to get to get her in the seat. And they got to do what about the Audi? Cap. What Car Audi, what Carlito? Audi could be, but the thing is, yeah. is is that she what is. Audi's looking for? They already got now. They already got a prospect in Joe, which is a young up and coming. And supposedly, if he had a better machine, he probably would do better. Is what people are wondering and thinking. So uh, is that something? And then we also Joe, let's just be let's I'll just be real. Nikki? Let's just be real, real quick. Let's just be real. OG okay. Villa, first off, big shout out to you. He says, I think after the whole Verstappen camp versus Horner camp drama recently, I think Horner isn't going to be charitable anymore by giving Max a weak teammate. I got money on Max getting a challenge as a teammate soon. Bro, we're going to talk about that. We're going to come back and have a Max Verstappen episode. All three, all three of the fam right here. We going because we can go an hour on Max Verstappen, OG Villa, um, but I think you got a point. Y'all think you want that. Right, right. It's going to be smoky. I, I mean, I might come in with my vest on. You know, I don't know what the fuck I might come in here with. Bring but your I'll say, s'mores. Bring your s'more packages because I'm going to light the fire on this. All right. So I just all think, the Hershey um, kisses, yeah, all that. All of them. I'm bringing the whole, Jeez. I'm bringing the family value pack too, man. So yes. I think, uh, Joe, I'm not saying Joe over Yuki, but I'm just saying that if they're looking at him like, it does. It's like, eh, what would happen if we had Joe in a in a RB Visa Cash App card? Would we see the same thing? Because he's doing some with a piece of shit we giving him. But is it financially smart for us coming in to just be worried about trying to move off that right now? Or are we gonna come in all Germaned up? You know, some people think they're gonna come in with the whole German trifecta, so there's no telling. But we will see. I think all of us hope that Yuki gets the look he should. That Yuki yep. gets the machinery where we can see us. Is it Yuki's limits or is the machine limiting Yuki? I think that right now is going to be the question on Yuki if he continues to go on the path he's going. I'm looking to see and hope that Yuki can finish at least in a sixth or seventh position at some point in time in this season. I am looking for that. If you had to say, Tanya, what, what do you think your expectations on the high and low end for Yuki would be by the end of the season? Where, where, What kind of position would you like to see Yuki in to put an exclamation mark on his season of 2024? I would say the best of the rest. Okay. I would say that. And where, I think is, that's that? where is that mark for you? I, so, <clears throat> all right. So, well, shit, because <laughs> Mercedes my, has moved up and down at that point. Um, Alpine, I would like to see him above the Alpine drivers. And okay. sitting maybe, I mean, I was, I would like to see him actually, I would say below Alonzo. Mm. I want to be bold. Oh. I want to be bold. Ooh, that's bold. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm going to, I'm going to be bold and say right, be, right below Alonzo. Shit. Okay. Thinking, but I, okay. So the rundown would be, all right. So it'd be like, all right. So Max Checo. And Ugh. then at the moment now, I'm just going at the moment now, McLaren. Okay. Okay. So then you got. Lando Norris, Oscar Piastri, um, which I kind of feel like it needs to be inverted, but whatever. Okay. Um, <laughs> and then you, you have George, you have George and Lewis, or Lewis and George. But then I would like it for it to be like Alonzo, and then Yuki, and then you know Stroll can be wherever. Okay, but all right, I'm with yeah. that. So you. So already... that's like six or seven. That's like yeah, no, that is six or seven. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. We we're gonna have a Lance Stroll conversation later too. But right now. As Americans, oh, I think it's time for us to check ourselves, check our check our motherfucking Patreon right here. No Captain America ass having, no damn respect for the cost pack cap ass giving. Logan Sergeant wanting to spin out, thinking the car is a NASCAR. He like doing circles out there on tracks. He Jeez. like running in the walls. Maybe it's time for a change. I'm thinking Logan Sergeant need to go ahead, go on down to NASCAR. It's going to simplify shit for him. One, you don't have to worry about right-hand turns. don't have to worry about pins. You don't have to worry about <laughs> S's. You don't have to worry That's about crazy. a lot of shit. All you got to do, turn left every now and then. Next. Just turn left. Oh I think Logan Sergeant might do better than that. You know, sometimes you got AP classes, you got unrolled, and you just got regular classes. I'm thinking Logan Sargent he might need to go remedial right now because bro is not that he hasn't done well. He got a second chance thanks to a few things. And James Viles, I'm telling you right now, if if you keep Logan Sargent in this damn seat this whole year and he doing shit like this, I'm going to start talking about your ass like I talk about <laughs> Lawrence Stroll with his damn nepotism baby ass over there. It, 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 <laughs> Capping off the fucking team, but we, we don't go get no ass tomorrow. Logan Jeez. Sargent, right now, I'm saying to NASCAR, trade his ass off. Tanya, what you say? Oh. I'm gonna just for the sake of the way that I go round and round with Imani, I'm gonna throw it to Imani first. Oh, let me let me just let me just uh, step into the building right now because uh. let me just say this: I am a true American. I love <laughs> apple pie. 
I'm just gonna say that. I love Apple Pie like I love Logan Sarge. I'm just gonna say that. And let me tell you something. When they kicked him to the curb last week, okay, I was there with Logan Sargent. I was sitting on this right here going, how the disrespect are you going to do Logan Sargent like that? That is a pure American right there. And that was all American disrespect, and that's all I had to say that week. And, you know, they already hate us enough, okay? Then they're going to pull this disrespectful stuff just to bench them. That's all it was. That's not our fault that you didn't have another chassis. Okay, okay. Let me tell you something. Go to Home Depot like a true American. Get you get you a chassis there for real. But let me just say this. I said all that last week. This week you cannot wreck in practice in the first practice. You just can't do it. Okay, you just cannot do that. Okay, and I understand. Well, there's really no excuses. But you cannot push that car hard enough in practice one, knowing that y'all have. No chassis, no wheels, no anything in that luggage at all, okay? You just can't do it, okay? And like I said, I'm, I'm the true. We have to – he has to understand the situation it is that he's the only American on the thing besides Hoss. So it's like 1.5 Americans on that thing in F1 right now, okay? You cannot wreck in practice. You push it in qualifying, yeah. Not practice, okay? What did Alan Iverson say? We're talking about practice. 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 <laughs> the first one. And you just going to spit out and go, I'm sorry. I don't want to hear overseer, underseer, idiot. No. I don't want to hear. The, and, and, and the whole thing is they call about the Dunlap turn and all that. I, you do not push that car. You go two miles an hour so everybody sees you. That's it. Get used to the track. Uh, listen, but – also, I'm going to say, but with Logan Sargent, I'm just saying, you cannot. <laughs> and then on top of that, you cannot almost wreck again and then back up <laughs> into a live race. Like, you just cannot do it. You're making all of us look like we can't drive. Okay? It's not, it's not just like you. This is You're putting a whole country on your back, and they're thinking <laughs> all of us can't drive. <laughs> okay, they already think we're crazy. They think we're driving on the wrong side of the road anyway. You're gonna back up into live traffic, Logan. That, like I said, Logan, and you had everybody on Twitter defending him last week. You had 50 50 lap this week now. I don't know how it is gonna be the, how to go to China, but let me tell you mm. something right now. I'm still going for the American. Okay, I'm still Lewis top and Logan second because it's just an American thing. We have to represent. But geez Louise, you just can't you can't do stuff like this when everybody's over here defending you. Listen, that's all I'm had to say. But it's USA all day, okay? <laughs> oh, cool. Jeez. All right, we got we got um what we got. We got Bonespaker says Lewis Hamilton is the GOAT, but Verstappen has been in a class of his own, and those are facts. Galactica says Logan barely made it to Formula One. They wanted the money. Bonespaker comes back and says, when Carlos was Max's teammate, Max crushed him, which is why Max got promoted to Red uh -huh. Bull and Carlos didn't. And though these are facts. Bonespaker, before we move on to Queen Tanya so she can spit up facts, bro, Carlos at that point in time, really? You can't name <laughs> no. Carlos, bro. That's your standard. Carlos at that point in time. Come on, man. <laughs> you can't name me. Those are facts, but your facts are whack as fuck right now. I'm just being real with you, Bonespaker. Uh -huh. Carlos is not, name name me a teammate that was better than Alonzo that Max had. Name me a teammate that was better than Valtteri that Max oh. had. Name me a teammate that was better than Nico that Max had. You can't name one. Max has not had a real solid teammate. And you got a match. Carlos was up out of there. Stop playing games, man. You know you spitting facts because it's historical data. You can't change that shit. But if we measure and put it in the cup, you lighten your ass on that one, bro. And you know it. You know it. <laughs> It's, Tanya, the, it's the ahead, car, right? not the driver. <laughs> right. Let's, let's put that out there now. It's the car, not the driver. Let's okay? go. Because if Helmut think, Marco if you said think, it. Yeah. If, if you think we're going to come here, and you think you're going to come here and start talking about some max facts that's not even true, let me just tell you something. It's the car, not the driver. So next time you type something else in there, just remember to put that in there. It's the car <laughs> that he's driving. It's not Max <laughs> doing what he's doing right now. Okay, hey. now I know we're supposed to have a whole nother episode in this. We're right. talking about just how Max, whatever. We ain't gonna talk about this now. And you can come back later. There we go. Okay. Silly <laughs> Witch says Logan keep crashing. He's gonna car 
a car looking like Flintstone, car underfoot power. See those little feet looking like a river dance commercial. <laughs> Tanya, what you got? <laughs> Man, y'all giving. <laughs> so I'm not Jeez. gonna spend a lot of time on this subject only because Amani and I have gotten into it 30 times over behind Logan Sargent. But I will say this, all right? And this is just on behalf of Formula One. There are so many people that have spent majority of their lives working extremely hard to get to Formula One. They have to constantly prove themselves. And even once they get into Formula One, they still have to prove themselves like a Yuki Sonoda, right? So this is what I'm saying. Or even an Alex right. Arbon, how you have to be, you're put out and you're, um, you're put out and then you have to come back and you have to re-enter. The simple fact that Logan Sargent is still able to stay in Formula One, despite mm. all of the <clears throat> mess ups that he's been doing, he mm. hasn't had a decent race since. Mm. Was it F2? He hasn't had a decent <laughs> race. He hasn't had a decent race. <laughs> so. <laughs> so. <laughs> hey. Hey. So I say that Jeez. to say this. Oh man, wait, hold Don't on. I think it. there's something coming up on. Okay. But I say that to say this. I really think that it's time for James Vowles to start rethinking about who the second driver to Alex Arbon is. That's it. Mm. I'm done. I, I'm going to say this. I am American. Matter of fact, uh -huh. I got plenty of things here to say I'm American. I got all types of American things around here, around me. I'm an American. That's right. All the way. Navy, true and blue. But Logan Sargent, your ass is through. Now, let me tell you something. When they took uh -huh. that car from you, Logan, I, you know what I said? God damn right you did. I'm going to tell you right now. I don't have time. Listen, I know we fucked up. I know we forgot the luggage. I know we didn't have a chassis. But maybe we ain't got the chassis because, you know what? You ran up the motherfucking cost cap last, last year, Logan. You just tow up shit. Now we only got one chassis, so it's not your fault that we didn't pack right. That's us. But, the, uh -huh. but now we here because we didn't pack right. So if I got one car... I'm looking at you just like that, like, <laughs> it ain't happening. I'm not giving it to you. You're going to sit down. You did it to yourself. You put yourself in a situation where I can say, you know what? Nah, you ain't, you, you're not the best chance we got. You're not the best opportunity. You're not the best chance. You're not, you, you brought home one point, and a lot of shit had to happen for you to get that one point. Albon was, if it wasn't for Alex Albon, we wouldn't even knew, we wouldn't have even knew we was on the right fucking track. We would have thought the car was ass. We would have thought we had to build a whole different car. If it was only two Logan Sargents, Williams would have said, well, shit, we fucked up the car. But because of Albon, we saw like, nah, you know what? The car's making progress. Logan's not. Logan, you got a second opportunity, which is not as rare in Formula 1 as it should be because, you know, the money talks and bullshit walks. But you got another opportunity. And I really was rooting for you this season. And I'm going to stop short because I don't have enough energy for this shit all season to see you wrecking up cars, building Lego sets. In practice. In practice, bro. In, and then in the race, listen, you, I know you American, but this ain't mud truck driving, bro. We ain't supposed to be driving in kitty oh, yeah. litter. What did you do? And then like Imani said, there ain't even no fucking reverse lights on there, bro. You just reversing in live traffic like it's okay. Jeez. You backing up like this okay. Uh, no, man, Logan, you're going to have to do a lot better than that. And and we and I am hoping you are because like Imani said, it is it is it is good to see that we are have a representation of an American mm -hmm. on the grid. It is good, but it's not good for us to have you representing America on the grid right now. And Haas, you ain't shit worth American. You got a PO box in America. I don't even think you really live here. I think you just got a PO box, and that's it's you got your mail five. being forwarded. I can't. I don't even want you being. In, matter of fact, Haas, you was flying Russian colors. That, I can't even count you. Can't even count you. So, Logan Sargent, I'm hoping the best for him. I'm hoping he actually comes up. A money, since, you know, you real passionate about this topic and you laid uh -huh. some tracks down. I'm going to say, Bones Banker said, I said LH is the GOAT, but how many flawless races does Max have to win before you call him the great, a great driver? Even if he's a jerk, give credit where credit is due. Okay, this is what I'm going to say. I'm, I'm going to respond to this. <clears throat> Bones Banker, I'm going to say this. I'm glad that you acknowledge Lewis Hamilton is the GOAT because that's fucking factual, statistically, and all of that uh -huh. shit. But I'm going to say this. You got to be the GOAT to have three fucked up ass seasons and no wins and still have all them goddamn records damn near unchallenged. Max has a car 
that is probably the most dominant car of all time in Formula One history. Let's just uh -huh. say that. But it is what it is with the machinery. So I'm, I'm going to let you have that. But let's also talk about this. Helmet Marco said Max could bring a Haas or a goddamn Alphatari to pole. I ain't never seen him do it, try it. Or it's never going to fucking happen because it won't happen. Nope. The other thing is this. Max is a very he's a phenomenal driver but let's not forget i don't even know why y'all bring lewis hamilton and max's name here i bring it in because y'all do silly shit like that let's worry about sebastian vettel first in red bull the most accomplished driver in red bull as far as championships because he's still got to get that and then he's got to break through that it is awesome what he's doing if max wins his fourth championship if i call seb great Max would be one of the great drivers, but he is not the fucking GOAT. It takes a lot more to be the GOAT. Max is, Max is on Kids Sports Illustrated, bro. He wasn't even on nothing that really counted. He was on Kids Sports Illustrated. Max is not marketable. Max doesn't do anything out here that you can name me that reaches out further than Formula One. Lewis Hamilton is bigger than Formula One. Max Verstappen going to fucking Ferrari was not going to boom up their stock prices. Look, just go to social media. That's all I'm saying. Go to the social media platforms and check that shit out for yourself. Numbers matter. Lewis got the numbers. Now, I will say this, and I'm going to be real when I say it. If Lewis goes to Ferrari and shit look bad, and it's not because the car and Charles is doing good, then I say, hey, you know what? Lewis is probably on the back end. But guess what? No GOAT lasts forever. There's You can't name me one athlete that's been the greatest forever and still not compete. Not Jordan. Every, not Jordan. No, nobody. So it happens. So it's funny that a lot of people are piping up now that this man's on the backside of his career. But I will say this. When he get in that Ferrari and uh. shit start going right, I just want to know. When I got, you know, I'm going to bring in the chefs and I'm going to have them make a nice crow pie. I'm uh. going to make it, have them make it nice and shitty, too. I just want to know you're going to have a slice of that. That's all I want to know. I'm going to give it to my bring brother. Bring that same energy. <laughs> bring that same energy. <laughs> same energy. Same energy. <laughs> Appreciate Jeez. you, boss. Take it over. You always bring some uh, hot, hot questions up. Imani, go ahead and close us out with the Logan take, bro. So here's the thing with Logan, right, is that, like I said, we had one week where we had defending him and everything. And it, like I said, even even when he got to 12 uh, last week, it was still like he can at least get points. He can or not. This, this. But here's the thing, right, is this week really showed, like, yeah, this, he might not at all. Like, he, he it, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't going to last at all. It's just, and I hate to see it, and I hate to say it, but it's just, um, you know, it's mm, at all. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> well, it is, it is, it is going to be rough, y'all. It's going to be rough yeah. for sure. But um, listen, we have, we have enjoyed ourselves, and we hope that you have enjoyed a conversation that you can only have here with us three mixed up in this pot, you know, kitchen and cooking in the kitchen, whipping it up on the stove, if you know what that means. I don't know where y'all whoop it up, and, you know, when you, where you from, where you from. But go ahead, uh, Tanya. Tell these people where they can reach you. And then after that, Imani, tell these people where you might want to let them check you out as well. You know, uh -huh. Sharon is Karen. So y'all go ahead. <clears throat> so hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. And um, I cannot wait to be back. But you can find me on Instagram as well as Snapchat. Shy Beautiful on Instagram. Shy Beautiful. But instead of the L at the end, one representing Formula One on Snapchat. And also, don't forget to listen to the podcast, Apex Takeover Podcast, um, where I talk to a lot of people about Formula One and all things that go fast. There we go. And money pop tall, bro. Yo, you already know what it is. It's a boy down south in uh, Alabama right now. Uh, look, if anybody want to get in touch with me, if anybody got any problems with me talking about how Lewis is goat and all this other <laughs> stuff and how it's a car and um, how Matthew Stafford can't even uh, take over a Fisher-Price uh, vehicle, listen here, okay? You follow me at imani1256, uh, all right? Or you can hit me up on 256 cards. I got all the sports cards. I got everything you want to know, everything you want to do and all that. So listen, let me tell you something. It's imani, that's I-M-A-N-I, 256. Add me on there. Let's have a discussion. And don't cry when you, okay, when you <laughs> hear this truth, all right? <laughs> So big shout out, right. hey, that is us for Formula One Yak post on the Monday of a GP. We will try to do it again. You know, all schedules combined. We appreciate y'all, everybody in the Super Chats. Appreciate y'all for that. Uh, Wolfpack family, thank you for showing up. And y'all, drink water, be safe, stay out those earthquakes, and hopefully you got to see the eclipse. Live life and be great. Peace.